Hello, and welcome to Fifi's Bookshelf. Since this is Thanksgiving week, I thought it would be festive to read a couple of Thanksgiving stories. So our story for today is called Peyton Picks the Perfect Pie by Jack Bishop. So get cozy and lend me your ears and let's get reading. Peyton is particular, but she's not picky. Grown-ups use that word a lot. Picky, picky, picky. It's never a good thing. And it's not fair. Peyton likes dogs and cats, scooters and bikes, pools and beaches. She's not picky. Peyton likes to try new things. She learned all about long division in math class. It was hard at first, but now it's fun, like solving a puzzle. Peyton just started playing the saxophone. She remembers to practice every day and enjoys it, as long as her dog, Mila, doesn't howl. And Peyton loves sports, every sport. Peyton even likes dodgeball. And who likes dodgeball? But Peyton is particular about food. She doesn't like it when two foods touch on her plate. She doesn't like green foods or orange foods or red foods. Peyton doesn't like foods that are gooey or gummy, sticky or slimy, frosted or flaky. And she most definitely doesn't like chunky or lumpy foods. But lately, Peyton has been thinking a lot about food. Her parents, Penny and Peter, love to cook. They never say it, but Peyton wonders if they would like her to be, well, less particular about food. Peyton's parents host Thanksgiving each year and ask guests to bring pies. Everyone is always so happy during the holiday, surrounded by people they love and food they enjoy. Not Peyton though. She loves her family, but the food is so green, so lumpy, and so flaky. I'm going to change this year, Peyton tells Mila. I'm going to try all the food. Mila gives Peyton a quizzical look. Okay, okay, not all the food, says Peyton with a shudder thinking about the lumpy gravy. How about I try one new thing? Peyton hears her mother singing as she rolls out pie dough. I'll try pie, Peyton exclaims. On Thanksgiving morning, Peyton helps her mom weave strips of pie dough into a pretty top. The small holes allow juices from the apples to evaporate, Penny says. That's why my crust is so flaky. Peyton tries to pretend she didn't just hear the word flaky. She looks over at her dad. Dad, do you need any help? The first guests are here. It's Uncle Sherwood and Uncle Mark. Peyton is excited and a little nervous to see all the different pies. We brought our famous lemon chest pie, says Uncle Mark. I like checkers better than chess, Peyton whispers to Mila. Then she asks her uncles, what does this pie have to do with playing chess? Uncle Sherwood is a history buff. This recipe dates back several hundred years to England. The original name was cheese pie because the yellow filling sets up very firm, like a piece of cheese. Cheese and pie? Peyton is concerned. That sounds both lumpy and sticky. Don't worry, says Uncle Mark assuringly. There's no cheese in our pie, just lemon, sugar, cornmeal, butter, and eggs. When the next guest arrives, Peyton is in the kitchen. She runs to hug Maria Alvarez, a social studies teacher at Peyton's school. Peyton, don't crush my ruffled milk pie. Ruffled what? Peyton asks her favorite teacher. I first had this pie in Greece, explains Miss Alvarez. It's made with the thin sheets of phyllo dough that are shaped into ruffles. A sweetened egg custard is poured over the phyllo, and the pie is baked until the phyllo is crisp and the custard just wiggles. Oh no, Peyton whispers to Mila. A pie that wiggles? And aren't ruffles for dresses? Peyton opens the front door to find a crowd on the porch. It's Grandma Pearl, Grandpa Rich, Aunt Mia, Uncle Noah, and Peyton's three cousins, Jude, Jane, and Jamal. Make room for me and my millionaire pie, says Grandma Pearl. Peyton asks her grandmother, do I get extra allowance if I try a piece? <laughs> Don't be silly, Peyton, 
but this pineapple pie does taste like a million bucks. Don't tell your parents, she added, but I bought my pie at the bakery for $10. What a deal. There's a knock at the back door. Peyton and Miller run to greet the next door neighbors. Bonjour, Peyton, says Miss Macaron. Please take my plum galette. Galette, asks Peyton. Oi, Peyton, exclaims Madeline who is in Peyton's grade. A galette is a rustic French tart. You arrange sliced plums on the dough, fold over the edges and bake, and voila. Don't forget the candid violets, as Miss Macaron, or your mother's cinnamon whipped cream. Peyton looks over to Miller and says, flowers made into candies? Whipped cream with cinnamon? Finding the plain pie is gonna be harder than I thought. Cousins Rachel and Russell from New York have bought Boston cream pie. Peyton is confused. They aren't from Boston, and their pie looks like a cake. Aunt Grace has a tray of whoopie pies. They look like chocolate flying saucers held together by a creamy white filling. Peyton likes the name, and she likes chocolate. But she wonders, is it cheating to try a pie that looks like a gigantic cookie? The Patels from across town arrive with Mississippi mud pie. Peg can finally spell Mississippi correctly, but mud doesn't sound good. Peyton hears a honk on the street. It's the Lees and their twin baby girls. They have brought two pies, pumpkin pecan and cranberry pear. These pies sound twice as fancy and twice as scary, Peyton thinks. Peyton goes back into the kitchen. Maybe her parents can offer some advice about choosing the right pie but Peyton's parents are very busy. Peyton dad asks her to carry some dishes to the table and then turns to Penny. We're missing someone. Where is your sister? Polly texts to say she's running late. An ice storm in Denver meant her plane was diverted to Dallas. Polly said to start without her. At the table, Peyton takes two slices of turkey, white meat of course, and no skin. And no thanks to lumpy gravy. A fluffy roll sits next to, but not touching, the turkey. She adds a tiny scoop of mashed potatoes. Penny gently clinks a fork against the side of her glass and the guests quiet down. Peter, Peyton, and I are so grateful that you all could share this special day with us. We celebrate with food, but having you all around our table is the real treat. Hmm. It's finally pie time. There are big ones and small ones, tall ones and short ones, red ones and yellow ones. And is that even a green one? Peyton has never seen so many pies, but one thing they all have in common, Peyton thinks, is that they're kind of lumpy and maybe a little bit sticky or flaky. <sighs> I'm not so sure I can do this. Peyton confides to Miller. Just then, the doorbell rings. Aunt Polly strides into the house holding two large frosted containers. I didn't bake pie, <laughs> she calls out laughing. I brought something even better, ice cream. I didn't know you could put ice cream on pie, Peyton says. Of course you can, Polly says. It's called pa a la mode. The truth is, Pie is just okay, but add ice cream and pie is divine. Peyton is suddenly feeling braver. She likes ice cream, particularly vanilla ice cream. Peyton takes a bite of her mom's apple pie. The pie is a little lumpy and a little flaky, but it doesn't seem as scary. Peyton takes another bite, then another. I thought I didn't like pie, but I guess I do. Sometimes, when we think we don't like something, we just have to look at it in a different way, says her wise aunt. If all else fails, just add ice cream. I like your apple pie, Mom, says Peyton. Penny looks surprised, happy but surprised. Peyton thinks for a moment and asks, can I try another pie? I'm so proud of you, Peyton. Which pie do you want? chess pie please and do you think uncle sherwood might teach me some chess moves maybe i would like chess if i gave it another try 
Peter raises his glass and clinks it with a fork. Here's to pie, especially pie a la mode. So remember this Thanksgiving to just try new things. Don't be afraid. Step out of your comfort zones and soar. All right? By Michelle Obama. The end.